one last thing. I'm very fussy about my equipment. Um, I like my BMW to work. All right, uh, so yeah, pretty small room, but pretty much packed, and I'm really happy about it because I feel really comfortable in such small conferences. We can all talk to each other afterwards, and I encourage you not to be shy. I know it's a little bit difficult uh, to approach a speaker, um, especially if somebody's you know, from the States and you're maybe not comfortable with the language, but I really encourage you just to ask all sorts of questions. And even after, after the conference or tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, you have any problem, uh, I mean typographic problem, you can, you can add reply me <laughs> and I'll be more than happy to help. Um, I have a series of commercials, so Type Tester in 2005, uh, I was a front-end developer in a company and then designers sent me the P PSDs with, you know, fonts. And I developed, I just picked the font from in the font shop and, and embedded in, in CSS and that was not the same. And they complained and I was sick of it and I just built Type Tester and now you have a tool, just pick the font, the fuck font and, you know, I will just um, put it in the, in the, in the in design. Uh, in 2009, uh, I uh, left my full-time job, created a studio, and it's called Creative Nights because we worked at night in the beginning, you know, in parallel with, to, with, with, the, with the day job. And, I mean, you can imagine what go to our tax office in our city, and she asks, like, Creative Nights, what do you do at night? And we're like, no, 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 that, not that. We are web designers. So uh, uh, a couple of years later, um, Smash Magazine, I'm one of the editors. Do you know the Smash Magazine is a German company? Did you know that? Because many people around the world think that it's an American company. So uh, yeah, but it, uh, anyway, parts of the talk are covered in this book. Do, does anyone has this book already? How many of you? Oh, so not many web designers actually here. How many web designers are in the room? Less than half. Wow. So it will be pretty boring to the rest of you, sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, besides that, I have a life. This is, uh, this is what's taken this summer in the beautiful Croatian coast. You probably um, went to Croatia, some of you, right? Uh, we have many, many German tourists and we love you for that. <laughs> You're about 60% of our income, you know, state income, so thank you. Uh, this was taken at 7 or 8 in the morning when the kids were still in bed. And you can see who was the least happy the last day of our, our vacation and who was the most happy uh, that we are finally true with, with all this, you know, carrying uh, a, a van of toys every day to the beach. Anyway, this guy here is very talented, uh, uh, typography-wise. Um, he played current games since he was five on the computer because he wanted to play video games, and I somehow tricked him that, you know, this is the video game. Uh, I mean, look at this Fist of Victory when he matches the, the correct kerning. And when he was nine, I was invited to do a workshop in, this, in his local elementary, uh, uh, you know, the type of workshop like what your father do, and then I came to present. And we this, did this exercise in using uh, as little ink as possible to create as big type as possible exercise. And then a couple of months ago, he came with this design for the, his proposition for museum logo done with Lego bricks. And I was like, uh, so, M-U-Z-E-J uh, means museum in creation. And what can I say? The font is strong in my family. Um, and like many of us who have this illness, an eye for typography, I too go crazy when I see an arrangement like that. Uh, this is taken in my home city, Zagreb. And I can understand the comic sense here. It is supposed to be fun because this is a field trip, right? Uh, there's like six typefaces and this kind of something design. 
And that's all cool, you know, that's all creative and you have to grab the intention, but what I really cannot understand is this dot here, right? <laughs> to me, <laughs> that was the, you know, that was the, the uh, climax of this design, you know? <laughs> it's so awful that you have to think twice before you dial all the numbers, right? Anyway, I, I, at some point I realized that I really have to know more about typography and I went to the summer course this, this summer in, uh, at Reading. Uh, it was really power packed and I learned a lot, a lot about type design. Uh, I didn't take the, the second week because I was so advanced that I built my first typeface in the first week. It was very awful but I was like, I've done my typeface and I can go home. Only the lowercase letters. Um, but most of all, I, I really had, I now really have, uh, um, these, old, these old people are now my friends, I can call them friends. Uh, and that's, that's very um, kind of great about this community. It's very small, but uh, sometimes there's politics, but most of all, if you're not like type designer, like I'm not type designer, I just design some typefaces, but I'm not type designer yet. Um, it's, it's really great to share um, things. Uh, one good thing about writing is that they have this great archive. And um, this is a book that contains accurate copies of all the known alphabets in the world, which basically means that a couple of centuries ago, we already have the UTF, right? That was the ancient UTF system. And then I found this one. Uh, this is 16 pixels meta, right? on my iPhone, and this, this type is even smaller. Um, they use it to save uh, paper costs, right? But also to create small books because you, you would be surprised. We even weren't, weren't allowed to read it before, right? Before four centuries, something like that. It's very awful how this, um, you know, um, how our dark past actually um, produce some of the greatest works in typography. <laughs> uh, anyway, what I do now is um, I try to not use responsive web typography anymore that much because all typography is just typography. We use the responsive web um, prefix just to kind of um, um, create awareness for the people that we can use typography as such. This is not traditional or print typography or what typography or whatever. There's just typography and a problem at hand and you use whatever means are necessary to you know deliver the perfect reading experience. The only difference between print and web typography is um, I'll quote Tim Brown here. You can you can uh, follow the link. Um, he said that in print you think about condition, you pick a point and you set your type and it doesn't change. It's over there, right? The point. Web topography is about picking more than one point. In fact, what we do is determine limits and define a range of acceptable solutions. So basically, we have to figure out our variables and see what's acceptable um, in a mix of conditions. So which are the variables? We have reading distance, viewport width, and height, which is basically what we call now uh, responsive web design. Uh, we have content hierarchy, information density, pixel density, device aspect ratio, orientation, et cetera, et cetera. And just to tackle uh, the first problem, the reading distance is probably the most important variable uh, for, your, for your letter size, right? Because everything begins with the letter size. Uh, I will just quote the specification of a pixel uh, on W3C, right? The reference pixel is the visual angle of one pixel on a device with a pixel density of 96 dpi and a distance from the reader of an arm's length. With me so far? For a nominal arm's length of 28 inches, I suppose this is 28 inches, the visual angle is therefore about 0.0213 degrees. Logically, right? 
For reading, at arm's length, one pixel thus corresponds to about 0.26 millimeters. What it does actually is specifies that at, the, at some distance, which is arm's length, the pixel should be 0.26 millimeters for every device, right? So if you are building a device that's TV or whatever, you have to take this angle and kind of increase the pixel. And you know what? Nobody actually knows about this standard, like Samsung or Apple or whoever builds devices that we can read from. So at the moment, we can only assume the reading distance based on kind of form factor of the device. Uh, but for instance, if you have an iPad and you're reading a recipe and you're moving around the kitchen, it's not at arm's length, right? It's somewhere there on the countertop or whatever. So uh, I've built this demo uh, with a face recognition from, from the guy Auden Matthias Oigard from Opera. He's crazy about this, you know, face recognition things. And what I basically did, uh, I used the laptop camera to track your face and kind of calculate the distance uh, between the reader and the screen, and then you can use it in CSS to increase uh, type. You can visit it uh, later and see how it works. It's basically useless because you know you have to approve the camera and secure the settings and sign you know, IRS forms and everything. But um, anyway, this is. I hope this is the future that we will kind of be able to detect what's happening between the device and the user and and um, you know, just bring more informed designs. Um, so another thing is uh, viewport width, and you all know about Robert Brinkers and his ideal line length, but the problem is that we don't have it. We don't have enough space on the screen width, especially now with this uh, smartphones, some smart, uh, smart um, clocks, iWatches, etc. Um, so what we have to do in web design is just, again, create a set of acceptable solutions. And I hope by now you all know that the longer the line, the more, the more space you need between the line because the eye has to come back. And I believe uh, some much smarter people on that topic will uh, talk about that more later. Um, but there's also the opposite rule. So whenever you have short line, you have Whenever, uh, <laughs> um, whenever you have shorter line, you have to tighten the space because you know the eye doesn't have to travel back, uh, you know, that much. And there's a good uh, calibration trick that I use. I just imagine if the paragraph looks like a list, then it's probably too loose. Um, so how to not overdo it? Uh, you can use consecutive rows of letters with uh, ascenders and descenders, or even you know with diacritics or umlauts. And if they touch, that's probably too close. So you have, you know, now two tools like lists and ascenders, descenders uh, to kind of calibrate your narrow uh, column. Um, so basically, in response to web design, you can use different values for different kind of distances. And I'm using a bottom margin for paragraphs, which equals the value of the line height to preserve vertical rhythm. And the vertical rhythm on the web is uh, something that people hate, but everybody wants to learn it. Um, and we used to use a um, small GIF that we would place in the background, say 24 by 24, if your baseline is 24 pixels high. And, uh, but now you have a problem because you have multiple screens, multiple baseline grids, right? Uh, but then again, uh, somebody told me yesterday that the Germans like code, so here's code. Uh, we can use linear gradient and fake the line, right? If you use it at 25, 95%, uh, uh, it will just create one pixel line and you could repeat it as a, as a background. And the cool thing is that background size accepts the M values. So if you go a step further and use SAS in your CSS, which, which I highly recommend, you can, you can create variables for uh, different baselines, right? Depending on the uh, 
on the line length, and then just use the same value for for your line height, for background size, to preview how your design uh, sits on a baseline. That's pretty cool, um, especially if you if you um, when you design for mobile, you can actually achieve weather algorithm because you have only one column. So why not do that? Also on tablets, uh, on desktops, it's 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 a little more difficult, but it can be done if you use variables because variables and multipliers of variables like half a variable or double the variable will help you to actually establish vertical rhythm. So it is possible, even though it will take you about two months to, um, you know, per design. Um, another thing that web designers are not aware of is uh, the word spacing and the letter spacing, which are two very important spaces. So whenever you touch the line space, you actually have to readjust the, the word space and the letter space. Um, the smaller the space is, the more delicate it is. So uh, that's why probably if you're not sure what you're doing, don't touch the letter space. But you can improve word space uh, and line space uh, without any danger. So uh, for instance, this is the typical screenshot uh, on mobile screen. And I know a couple of graphic designers, my friends, they always tell me that uh, type on screen is set too tight. So I did a couple of experiments, and it turned out, for them at least, that this is much more appropriate design. And I use 0.01 M to letter space uh, uh, the text on the right. And you can barely see the difference, but it's, it's much more comfortable because you don't have this kind of, you know, touching here. This is this is basically turned into a ligature, right? Um, where else? This is this is awful because it connects too, too much. So uh, my point is everything is allowed, right? These are basically the values that you would use, 0.01m. And it will just space, uh, just add a little space uh, just enough to, to make it more comfortable. Of course, if you overdo it, you will end up with, with a design like that. I can, I mean, by now you probably know that this is wrong. Uh, but if you're not sure about this letter spacing, uh, I always ask somebody like random person just to read the text out loud. And if they're not comfortable, if you hear that the rhythm is not even, then it's probably uh, you did something wrong with the design. Uh, also, very good book, Inside Paragraphs, very thin. I like thin books. You can read it in like an hour and a half. Um, explains all these delicate little, you know, spacing things um, around letters and and, um, and in the line. So the next thing is hierarchy. How do we how do we deal with hierarchy in web design? So if we have if most of the articles are just you know a couple of paragraphs with with, with a heading, it doesn't make sense to design enormous, gigantic heading of 72 pixels or whatever, uh, because it will just create, it will be just too loud, and you will break the whole text. The, the text will be scared and, and tiny and you know in the corner. So uh, keep that in mind. If, if you don't have many subheads, just make them more you know, supple. On the other hand, if you have long text, you actually have to have contrasts the user can scan the page. Subheads are not for, you know, subheads are not decoration. They are overview of the text because most of you and, and probably your users scroll the page up and down to see how long it is and you can catch their attention by strategically positioning uh, subheads and captions and callouts and whatnot. Um, so for the beginning, if you're not too experienced about it, you can uh, use the typographic scale, which was in, went in the 16th century, something like that. Um, and it's pretty generic, but it works. And how do you apply that? You can use uh, 16 for paragraphs, H3, H2, H1 for mobile screen, and then just move up the scale for, for tablets, and up the scale for desktop, and up the scale to, for, for TV screens, or whatever. Or, or down the scale, for, for instance, for, for iWatch, or for um, display in a car, or something like that, washing, uh, washing machine, etc. And in this way, if you have a scale, and you use the scale for different applications, uh, you have this kind of brand consistency, if, you, if there's such a thing 
in typography um, that you can maintain uh, on all devices, on all applications. And then once you are comfortable with, with, this, with scaling it, etc., you can use the modular scale and you can enter the ideal text size. So this is body copy here. What I'm really amazed uh, when I talk to web designers is that they don't understand why these values here. Well, it's simple. If you have body copy at 16 pixels and you know headings here, you can use, for instance, this value for um, help text around the field in a form. You can use this value for copyright. You can use, you know, maybe you, you need to have some legal information just for somebody who's inspecting your website from the government, but actually users don't need that information. You have to have it on the website. You just can use something, uh, you know, on the lower end, or on the lower end uh, of the scale. So this is where you, you would use. Also, you can use, for instance, 10 pixels for captions if you want to set captions in, in all caps or something like that. So there's actually a use for, for smaller letter sizes. So uh, apart from, from creating hierarchy with, with the scale, we can use different styles. And I know that you probably know how to set all caps in CSS and italics, but the small caps uh, are a little trickier. Um, I'll explain a little later, but the point is that you can use styles for mobile screens and you can use typographic scale for desktop resolutions, for desktop you know, uh, space. Because you don't have uh, multiple columns here, nothing competes too much and you can just keep it you know, uh, simpler. So this is my favorite part, especially if I have uh, type designers in the room. <laughs> Uh, the, first, the first option to create small caps is just to use separate uh, font. This is the, the safest thing, right? Uh, the next thing is font feature settings. And I'm sad to report that Safari actually dropped the support for uh, font feature settings, which means that it will turn on font feature settings for uh, some things, for instance, uh, ligatures, and you cannot turn it off but you cannot um, turn on the small caps or whatever. You cannot change anything. So they have the default set of, of uh, predefined values for font feature settings. So um, yeah, I don't know what to do about it. Um, and the last resource is actually to decrease the uppercase letter to about 8% and then use uh, grades or, or you know, uh, width, uh, weights in between to kind of compensate for the fragility of of uh, uppercase letter that is uh, reduced in size. Um, so some year ago, about a year ago, I, I created this page which has like multiple options for setting subheads and I encourage you to go ahead. There's, a, there's, a, there's an article about it. So I kind of investigated what, what everything that's possible to use to create um, hierarchy with subheads. Uh, so for instance, floating left, floating uh, right, uh, inline, crossbars, etc. Et you have everything there with CSS examples. The next thing is information density. So again, you have very little information here. The navigation, the, the content, the navigation, the content, add, right? Relating something because we have space, let's put it in. Uh, then you, know, you have banner here, then navigation goes here. You have some interest shit, and then uh, you have the main article, and then again ads and related content, etc. So the more information you have on an area, you have to kind of create balance. So this is my strategy for for mobile screens. I use style variations, so all caps, italics, uh, small caps are the same letter size. Indented paragraphs, because you know why not? Uh, you have very little space, so bring another line to the screen and use white space to separate sections of the page. And with more information, you can use typographic scale. You can go really large with, 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 with the main heading. You can use block paragraphs, uh, separate everything with, with a clear line, and use graphic elements like background colors, lines, texture, etc., to separate different sections on the design. And to prove that uh, it was not you know, lines and backgrounds are not the brainchild of web designers. Um, this, is, this is an example of, of newspapers. 
And I really like the, the, the titles here. Um, next thing, pixel density. Uh, Stephen already told about uh, hinting and you know Windows problems and rendering differences, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's very important that uh, uh, you investigate your options. For instance, reading edge fonts are not particularly well hinted per se, uh, but are really well designed for screen. So, as Stephen already said, uh, you can actually design a typeface that will look uh, good on screen, regardless. You know the uh, rendering uh, engine. Um, here's a little quiz for you. So, and know, I know at least one person who immediately knows which typeface is this, right? The one that holds the iPhone and takes a picture of her face. <laughs> so this is Adele uh, on three devices. Can you guess the devices? Anybody? From the same manufacturer? The manufacturer that kind of cares about typography and is control freak. So yeah, Apple, who kinds of have everything the same across the board, uh, they cannot you know, have consistent rendering. So again, uh, it's not web typography that's something new. Just go into traditional typography and see um, what they did. So they created. Uh, grades, which may, which are kind of sub uh, weights uh, that don't change the, the proportion of the text, uh, and they use that to compensate for the for the ink performance or paper you know quality etc. So uh, apart from that, we have another problem, and this is RGB subpixel system. So basically, subpixel anti-aliasing works in horizontal way. In most cases, uh, unless you, you know, rotate your device, <laughs> so it doesn't work in horizontal uh, direction anymore. It now works in vertical. So, Mr. Oliver, who sits here, came with an idea. Well, why not use grades again? Not web design, that's just typography, normal typography. Why not use grades to compensate? for these rendering differences when you rotate the device or you have like a low resolution screen. And the implementation is super easy. I mean, the only thing that you have to have is like three grades for the font and you copy and paste a code like that and it works. It really improves readability uh, in these different cases. And especially if you have, uh, I mean, your, your reason was probably because you had this application and it's, everything has to be very, it's very font centric, right? Type centric. Uh, especially in these cases, you, you really would want to take care of that. Um, another thing, device orientation. Can you see the difference between these two? Anybody? I should have offered like 100 euros, something like that, right? So the text on the, uh, on the left is, uh, sorry, the text on the left is condensed, right? Can you guess the typeface at least? The typeface on the right? Georgia, exactly. And, and the typeface on the left? Maybe or, or yes? All right, yes, yeah, because for, that's the most probable answer, yeah. So I don't know if you knew, but you have like condensed Verdana in Georgia. Did you know that? Little people know that. Especially if you're working for IKEA or something like that, like web designer for IKEA, you're like have, you know. They're probably the only company that went back in, you know, their type branding. Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway. You can do that uh, now automatically because um, Nick Sherman and Chris Lewis created this script, and you just uh, put a list of typefaces that are like your optional typefaces. Uh, you you uh, serve it to the script, and it will decide if if a typeface can fit, you know, the column width, and just replace whatever uh, there's needed. By the way, did you know that you can actually include with add font face uh, all the fonts that you need, and it's not downloaded until you declare it in your CSS. So if you want to, you can actually have like 50 typefaces called in your CSS. If you never declare them uh, with font family, 
uh, they will not be downloaded. So that's a cool thing, uh, especially for dynamic websites. So web fonts available in multiple widths, there's plenty of options, really like a lot of options, and uh, there's really no reason to have like broken headlines on mobile, etc. Just use condensed or compressed or extra compressed, or uh, there's like many many versions for that. Uh, screen absolute ratio. Um, again, quiz. Anybody? What's this? It's very simple. Oh, standard paper sizes. So. Yeah, you can see how perfectly aligned they are, right? Compared to our case screens. If we had such a situation, maybe we could see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? But this is, <laughs> this is our situation with screens. And I'm afraid I don't have anything to suggest about that, uh, except that you just um, leave it. it. Um, we cannot rely on, on fixed aspect ratios uh, in, in screen design. So to recap, uh, reading distance, we are assuming reading distances based on form factors. Uh, there are some experiments. Uh, for instance, Firefox OS has a proximity sensor. It works only up to 10 centimeters, but you know it's a sensor. Uh, with that height, we can test with uh, media queries, and we can uh, improve our line spacing and letter spacing and uh, word spacing. We can use uh, two different modes for uh, for creating uh, content hierarchy with uh, style options, uh, style variants, and with with typographic scale. We can use uh, different graphic elements for for desktop screens uh, and white space for for smaller screens. We can fix pixel densities, uh, different pixel densities with grades. We can use uh, smart scripts and multiple widths for uh, sc different screen orientations. And we have to live with screen aspect ratio. So our system looks something like this, right? These are our multiple axes. And I believe that for every project that you have, there is some kind of cloud that will cover all these cases uh, for that particular project. But the thing is that I only talked about the relationship between the device and the user. And what happens as outside of this relationship is also very important. So Kenneth Bowles came with uh, these seven facets of um, user experience. Uh, it's, very, it's very helpful that he arranged it like that so you can memorize it better. Uh, it's so well written across multiple pages uh, on his blog, so I encourage you to just read it and you will understand a lot about what influences uh, experience, not just the reading experience, but uh, the experience in general. Um, I'll just mention that one, social. Uh, so have you ever thought about social facet of reading experience? Anybody has the slightest idea what it is? What it would be? No? Well, that's, that's a single person activity. So you read, and you send, and then she reads. So multi-user uh, activities probably, I don't know, let, letterpress game on iPhone, right? Letterpress game. Uh, a text messaging a chat, whatever you have to do with multiple persons, chat room, whatever. So you have to think about it because if you kind of um, enable preferences or something like that, you have to think about how it displays to another person. So one person can decide on, I don't know, Helvetica 10 pixels, whatever, the default, and another one can um, you know, uh, have custom typography on their chat window and maybe these two persons have completely different context because one person can read at most two messages and another can have like 50 messages. And so somebody is in advantage, obviously. Uh, and also if you have, um, if somebody is angry on one side and another person is trying to kind of justify their you know, actions, uh, again, the same typography cannot work for these different moods. So ideally, you would design a chat system that will recognize that somebody is angry to another person and then you know, uh, use type that 
will just bring you know the tensions a little down or something like that, or encourage another person to stand out for to stand up for herself, and you know things like that. So it can really get complicated, and we end up with you know seven variables of uh, reading experience plus seven variables of general experience. It's like 14 x's, and I mean. The only thing I can say is, you know, congratulations on your job. This is what you have to deal with. Um, but you know, typography is important, not, but not that important. Uh, it's easy to obsess about every little detail, right? So what I usually do is just exhale and ex inhale and you know, disconnect. That's my advice. Thank you.